Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about awakening your dreams. You know, and I had to bring back JJ because I had such a great time picking her brain last time that, you know what? I was like, I need to pick her brain again. <laughs> so thank you again, JJ, for coming on my show. How are you doing? Great, Mitzi. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Uh, Awaking Your Dream Life is an event that I did last year and I'm doing again in January, although differently, uh, that I put together based on some work from one of my guests on my show, along with some other ideas that I had. And it was just such a successful, fun, interesting, and new way to look at your brain and how to utilize it to awaken your dream life. I mean, so I'm I'm curious, when you say dream life, do you necessarily mean dreaming actually when you go to sleep and dreaming? Or are you meaning like those dreams that you inspire for, those goals and manifestations? Is that the direction that we're kind of leading towards today? Yeah. Yeah. To if, if you say I want something more than I currently have, how do you get there? And right. most people don't know how to get there. And uh and so there are some technologies for the brain and frequencies that, and there are lots of different tools that somebody can use, but I had sort of stumbled upon one that fit really well with what I was already using and then wanted to combine them to present them to people. And they're all activity based. They're all, so I'll, I can talk about concepts, but we want to integrate those concepts, right? So it's not just about like talking about it and understanding it. We want to actually do it. We want to know it. We want to dig for it. We want to understand it. We want to see it. We want to practice it. We want to be it. Exactly. And we want accountability to do that too. Exactly. Exactly. So what do you say to somebody that says that my dreams are just too big to actually obtain i mean is that a thing i mean what do you say to those type of people or what do you think about when i don't know that i attract those kind of people but um i'm sure everybody in my community though and even some of my clients might sometimes think that because sometimes when we're discouraged or looking at something we don't like and we're sort of out of alignment and we have negative momentum going on yeah it's easy to think those negative thoughts because we've created a momentum of negative thoughts because we're not in alignment so it's easy to go down that path and that rabbit hole, especially if you practice it, it's, it's like exercise. You're good at what you practice. So if you don't practice, if you practice negative thoughts, you're really good at negative thoughts. They come easily. They feel comfortable. (laughs) But if you practice positive thoughts, you get better at that. And then the negative thoughts stick out a little bit more and you can do something about it, but you're really just good at whatever you practice. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. I like the way that you put that because people don't realize you know, what you do in your mind, it may be silent, the world might not see it, but not in an actuality, goodness, I couldn't say that's, um, you know, it really does determine our lives and what happens and how what, what comes out of us and what is attracted to us. So the first thing when you said, oh, I don't attract those type of people, I mean, well, of course not. You're around people who are, are like-minded or who are wanting to change their frame of mind because they know that they're done with that, that, that lifestyle that just kept them in the rut. So do you promote those vision boards? Because I hear that that's a big way to manifest your dreams. Tell me in your opinion, JJ, what do you think? Well, I, I do, but a vision board is like a treadmill. You can make one, but if you don't use it, it doesn't do anything for you. Hmm, So how do you use it? Well, I have a podcast all about why your vision board doesn't work. And I'd love everybody to go listen to that or watch that. Um, But no, I I actually personally have used vision boards myself. And I often will, depending on the client and the situation, want to help them stretch into a new dream. And I will ask them to either make a vision board or grab some images that really like in your body, you can feel your response to the image, right? It's all about the the vibration, the feeling. It's not about the thinking. So you, you can think something. It's like the people that watched The Secret years ago, or even family members of mine, like, yeah, I tried it. It didn't work. I'm like, right. So when you in your mind or out of your mouth say, I'm going to manifest a million dollars, but no part of you believes it, feels it, or is in alignment with it, with how your body is vibrating, of course, it's not going to work because you can't say something that you don't believe and have it come true. That's not how it works. It's in fact, it's not even about the word. It's about the frequency. You can think it and feel it and never say a word and get it if you're in alignment with it. But that's, that's where people don't like the whole manifestation conversation is really about how much joy, love, and abundance will you allow in? Ooh, that's deep. Because it's not about, I'm going to be happy when I get that thing. That's not how frequency works. 
You have to be at the frequency to receive the thing. And then when you get to the frequency, you don't even need the thing because the reason why you wanted it in the first place was to feel better. So it's like, if you just, here's the trick. Anything you want is because you want to feel better, period. There's nothing that you want in your life that isn't because you think you're going to feel better when you have it. It's You're literally always reaching for the feeling, period. For it's relief, true. for joy, for security, for safety, for connection. You're reaching for the feeling. The thing doesn't necessarily bring the feeling. You think it does. But in manifestation, you have to have the feeling before you can even get the thing. So, and that's what people don't know how to do. They think it's all very yeah. circumstantial. They're like, oh, well, I'll feel better when X, Y, Z. I'm like, well, good luck with that. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Not with that attitude. But it's interesting because you said it's once you have the feeling, then you have the thing. But my thing is, like you said earlier, people don't have the feeling. So how do you tap into the feeling to actually have the frequency and everything else already aligned? You know, because if you're so trained in having those negative thoughts and you're trying to push away from this rut of negativity that you accepted and, and got really comfortable in, and now you're trying to get that feeling of optimistic or the goals or the dreams. I mean, how do you necessarily tap into it so it stays with them? Does that go deeper into like trauma or what is that? What is that it can, necessarily? It can, but it, I mean, it will eventually because you'll you're run into an upper limit of how much joy, love, an abundance you will allow yourself to have. Um, which is why another reason why manifestation will slow down because if you you have a belief about what you think you deserve and you'll only allow yourself to stretch as far as you will allow that whatever you deserve in. But most people or all people want more than that, but they don't think they deserve it. So they don't allow it in because they don't trust, they won't try, they don't believe that just having the feeling is enough. So, mm -hmm. so you have to, so, you know, when you're starting out again, if you're good at what you practice. So if you practice negative thoughts, you practice looking at things negatively, I promise. If you look at any situation and try to pick it apart to find what's wrong with it, you will find it. So you have to practice the opposite of that. You have to practice what's going well and doing an appreciation or a rampage of appreciation or a journal of appreciation and literally be looking for, tune yourself to what is working, not what isn't working. It's the difference of, I mean, have you ever, I used to teach power positivity classes to like Verizon and different corporations. And, you know, I, and I wasn't really supported because I wasn't, it wasn't my own business. I was working for another like insurance company. And so, you know, they didn't really want me talking about law of attraction. So I had to kind of find other ways to talk about law of attraction without talking about law of attraction. So the story that I would always use is, do you remember when you bought your last car? And do you remember that after you bought your last car that you saw your car everywhere, all of a sudden on the road in the parking lots, you're like, oh my God, that person has my car. Oh my God, that person has my car. Now, did everyone go out and buy the same car at the same time? No, you're tuned to your car. All of a sudden your, your frequency is literally in vibrant, like you're in alignment with your car. So now you see your car everywhere, <laughs> or maybe it's a, maybe you're thinking about getting that car and you're seeing that car everywhere, but it's, it's literally very noticeable. And that could be with anything. It doesn't have to be a car, but for me, cause I'd had a couple cars at that point, And I remember, and everybody used to say, Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That happened to me. Well, that's an example of tuning yourself to something. And in this case, that's a car, but you can tune yourself to finding positivity, to finding joy, to finding how the universe is providing for you, how you're receiving gifts all the time or messages or uh, signs, if you will, right? If you tune to that, you'll see them more. And yeah. it's really, it's really just a story that you're telling yourself, even the negative story. Most people tell negative stories because they're repeating something from the past because they're afraid or they're mad. They're upset. They have not resolved whatever happened. They're feeling victimized. And you're just telling a story anyway. You're just literally making it up. If you ask yourself the story that you're telling yourself that's negative, is it actually true? And most of the time it's not. So instead of continuing to tell a story that's not true, why don't you tell a story that feels better that's not true, that you want to have happen, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's it really is just flipping that switch of the way that you're thinking and just like refocusing yourself you know it's like when you're trying to tell a child to look to pick up a toy it's like just look right there it's like that's sometimes how it is when it comes to the way that we're we're seeing life and the way that we're just re wanting to receive it I mean having that victimized mentality goodness gracious I feel like I'm surrounded by those people because 
it's always always happening people always love to play play the victim and in actuality we have a lot more control of our lives and and our decisions and our come than what people actually determine i mean you're choosing that at that point you know you're choosing to be upset you're choosing to react in that way you're choosing to respond you're choosing everything else as soon as something does not blow in your direction in the right way you know what i'm saying it's crazy so i know you kind of basically said it but to in layman's terms what is in your opinion a dream killer you know what can kill your dreams just continuing to practice what you don't want it's the telling the story of what you don't want versus the story of what you do want it's it's coming up with all the reasons why you can't have what you want versus all the reasons why you can people Excuse will me. say well i can't have that because this is this, this oh no no no, i can't have that i can't do that i can't do that right so we can come up with a lot of really good reasons of why we can't have something but most people who are really good at that can't come up with five reasons why they can so again, yeah. it's about that practice piece. Everyone understands that if you want to lose weight, you want to change your body composition, you have to go to the, you have to exercise, whether it be go to the gym or whatever, you have to do something, right? You have to create a stimulus that forces the body to change. So it's yeah. the same thing with your brain. It's the same thing with your habits. It's the same thing with the, how you look at the world. If you don't change your perspective of how you look at the world, then you never change your, your results. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So do you say that you're living out your dreams? Did you one day look back and just can just say like, I, I wanted this, po this position in my life right now. I mean, can you say that? Yes. Um, in fact, so <laughs> maybe this, I don't know if this is how this is going to come across, but there, there comes a point where yes, after it. you manifest like things that you have wanted that you go, okay, now what? You're like, okay, I really wanted those things. I really wanted those things. I got those things. Now what? Yeah. And so the last couple of years have been about sort of stretching into new dreams, new mm -hmm. desires, new things. And um, it's been good. It's been fun. And and today and yesterday, uh, my partner Doug and I started a practice again that we did when we we were living in a, you know, there's a whole story about our relationship. But anyway, that's very law of attraction. Um, but I'm not going to tell that story here because it's too long. But let's just say when we got together, we lived in a house that I was in with sort of my ex-husband and we were there for about a year. I loved that house. And I literally would have never moved from that house. I would have tried to buy something somewhere else, but I would have rented there because it was so like they had it priced undervalued and because uh, I was there for so long. And and one day um, they wanted to sell it and they offered us to buy it. And of course, with the no came, here's your 60 day notice to move out. So we had, after 10 years of living in this house and I had three cats, I had to find a place to rent nearby it, it was just, a, and then, and pack up my stuff. So it was one of those like, oh my God, but the universe had to push me because I wasn't going to leave because I loved it there, even though, it, it, you know, that I love everything about it. I was so comfortable. So then we get, we find a place we don't like it, but, but that's good. And I said, this is good. We're going to, it's good enough. And because I don't like it, it's going to force me to focus. It's going to force me to focus on saving money, making money and buying a house, which now I have, and I have my dream house. And we worked on how to get here. And every time I would I remember in the, in our old bathroom, our, our master bathroom in the rental that we didn't like, it was one of those toilet paper holders that was on the wall that like creaks. So oh. you'd make noise no matter what time it was. And I hated it. And at first it would make me mad. And then I started to laugh and I was like, thank you universe for showing me what I hate. Thank you for letting me know that I would not stay here. Thank you for continuing to motivate me to focus so that I can buy the house that I want and move where I want. And so we did this practice and that I have on my show. It's an episode 111 called Abundance and Intuition. And uh, it's a four-step process. And so we started doing it when we were living in this place, in this condo. And it helped us, like literally helped us manifest this house. And I remember when we got it and he, Doug was like, oh my God, it worked. Like we, you did it. Like, this is real. I'm like, yeah, I know it's real. But I, cause I'd already been manifesting all kinds of things. So, so fast forward, we get here and now we're like comfortable. We're living in the dream house. We got the things we want. And, and so now I have, we have different dreams now. And two days ago, we started doing this practice again. It's been a couple of years. We put it down for two years, picked it back up and we're reading highly recommend for anyone who's out there who has a business or don't not think and grow rich. It's the fourth time I've read this book, but today and yesterday, today it hit me so hard because I'm in a different frequency. 
I'm in mm-hmm. a different frequency and I'm in a different place in life to hear it differently that already mm-hmm. on the, like the third page, I'm like, oh my God, I get it. Oh my God. I like, it's so much more clear. Some of the things that I'm going to do. So, you know, you have to, you practice what you know. And if you want to change, you have to learn something different. <laughs> so, so yeah. you can't really change your situation if you don't have any new information. So you want to keep growing by yeah. joining groups and working with people and, you know, going to live events and reading books and listening to podcasts, but then actually doing it, not just listening, not just reading, but taking action and doing the things that you're learning. Absolutely. I think that's amazing. I mean, yeah, you have the greatest point right there. Once you get what you manifest in that way, now what do I do? What do I do with myself now that I'm here? I'm happy. I'm joyful. I'm still content. I'm appreciative. I'm, I'm, I feel the blessings, but at the same time, I know I want more. And I think that right there, that feeling knows that you can do more. You, you can strive for more. You can achieve so much more than what we, like you said earlier, limit ourselves, you know, because we limit ourselves by where we are at and what is surrounding us and what we continue to allow to play replay in our mind over and over again. That is truly, truly something to think about. Goodness. I'm, I'm literally, my, my wheels are turning because this is something that needs to be needs to be said and needs to be heard and really needs to be thought about because people can strive to do better and more. And I love, love, love the fact that you said that you were comfortable in the home that you were in. You were there for 10 years, comfortable. It was great. It was where you wanted to be, but you knew that you wanted something more, but you didn't want to leave. But the universe forced you out to kick you out, get get yourself out of that comfort zone so that you can finally realize like, you know what? I need to go in that direction, that direction and that light that you know that was inside you. And I think a lot of, a, a lot of people don't realize sometimes situations happens in our lives just so that we can move forward towards our dreams to move forward towards our goals Mm. and they don't realize that this hiccup isn't really a hiccup it's more of like uh go it's a nudge like "Eh, eh, move move yourself move yourself (laughs) like that and I think that is something truly amazing thank you for sharing that with me I really do appreciate that that you didn't have to share you didn't have to share your time your perspective your stories you know, but you did and you do. And I truly, truly appreciate it. And as always, 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 what are some lasting words that you can leave myself and my audience off with, even though you already gave some great points, like goodness gracious, I'm going to be re-listening to this, like goodness, let me write this down. (laughs) Well, I mentioned two two podcasts and one is called uh, Why Your Vision Board Isn't Working. And that's early, like probably within the first five episodes of Spirit, Purpose and Energy. I can't give you the number. I don't know off the top of my head. But episode okay. 111 on spirit, purpose, and energy, which was many years ago, because I'm just, I just produced uh, episode like 411. Um, so anyway, that's 300 episodes ago. But uh, anyway, but that is the practice that we did to manifest our house. I even have an episode called how to manifest your dream home. Uh, and we did talk about that. So in terms of, I think the most important thing people would benefit from remembering is that you've been taught certain things, you've been modeled certain things. So in your sphere of influence, in your family, in your friends, in your school, in your job, in your work, like you, your point of view and your ability to dream is going to be modeled by the people around you. So the person with the most success or the happiest life is your sort of benchmark for what's possible. So I'd invite you to consider new circles, more circles, look for evidence of people doing what you want to be doing and see that it's possible because you only, if you only see what's in front of you, you think nothing else is possible, but there are people all over this planet doing amazing things you've never even thought about that you didn't think was possible, that you don't know is possible, but they're doing it. So if you want something more than you have, find yourself, don't you have to divorce or leave everybody, but find another group, find other people who are doing more than you're doing to inspire you for more. Exactly, exactly. And if they haven't said what you just said, they also say, oh, I'm content where I'm at and I don't need other people around me because I've already achieved enough or I already achieved a lot from where I came from. And I hate that. I hate that saying. Oh my goodness, it irks my soul. Oh, it irks me. Because it's like you're you're you you just settled right there. You not only did you settle, but you limited yourself. You literally just stopped yourself from growing, from evolving, from moving forward, and just becoming something greater that you can become. And it's 
it's something that needs to be said like i say always something truly to think about y'all so that's it as as always check out jj's awesome podcast awesome content that she has on her website that you can find directly on my website obviously you just click her lovely photo just boop, boop, right there and it'll go directly find all the greatness that she has to offer to the world because she truly does she's trying to help you guys out she's not being selfish with this information she's trying to share it just so that we can all evolve and grow and become what we all want you know and that's truly happiness and joy that we already have inside of us so always always keep thinking y'all bye